Good morning, Honorable Minister of Transportation, Right Honorable Chibuike Rotimi Amechi, our members of the Presidential Communication Team, led by Special Advisor to the President of Media and Publicity, Mr. Femi Adishino, other members of the PCT, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press. A key thrust of the President Muhammadu Buhari administration is the provision of basic infrastructure for the Nigerian populace. Central to this is the provision of transportation infrastructure across all nooks and crannies of the country. The recent strides in the rail sector in Nigeria have led to the term rail revolution. The presidential communication team, in the 13th episode of its special briefings, today has invited the face behind that rail revolution. Right Honorable Chibuike Rotimi Amichi, the Honorable Minister of Transportation, to give an outline of all the rail projects going on in the country. He will also brief about the current projects completed ones, and areas of collaboration between the ministry and state governments targeted at ensuring the timely completion of the projects. You will also talk to us about the challenges he's experienced so far and solutions being preferred to ensure completion of the projects in the transportation sector in record time. So now it's my and I'm privileged to invite the Honorable Minister to this podium, as usual, to brief for about uh, 20, 25 minutes, after which you will also take questions from representatives of local and international press here this morning. Honorable Minister. There are two ways. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the special advisor to the president on press and special assistant to the president. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, there are two ways to go. I can read you the speech or you want me to speak as temporary. Which of them? Back. You know, I told uh, the young lady when she came to my office, she said, I'm here to prepare you. And I said, prepare me. And I said, prepare me on what? My ministry. I thought I should be able to tell you my ministry without having to uh, even write it down. I will start with what's going to happen in, uh, okay, I don't know if, I don't know if I should reveal the date or, or, or wait for the villa. But in the next two weeks, uh, we should be, uh, one week plus, we should be launching and commencing immediately the construction of Kano Kaduna Rail. The president will be launching it and then we will commence construction immediately. The reason why we are commencing construction immediately is that all the necessary contracts have been awarded. We have been waiting for the loan for too long now from China and the money has not come. So we decided to fund it from the budget. We already paid about $218 million to them and we are about to pay them another $100 million. So that will be about $318 million. And look at that, it's about $1.2 billion. The moment you pay, 300, the moment you pay about $318 million, you must have paid that one third of the project. So we believe that by the time they, we get the loan, we should, from the budget, have funded up to $600 million, between five and $600 million. So that should be able to take the project nearly halfway before the funds will come. Because if we continue to wait for the loan, whether from China or Europe, we may likely not complete it before we go. So I made a decision as the minister is in charge and reported to the president that I will commence construction with our own funds and pending when when the loan will fall, fall through. Uh, we are also continuing the negotiation for, we've concluded the negotiation actually, we're just waiting for the Chinese uh, fund, the banks to approve the loan, the loan from uh, Ebana to Kano. But since they've not approved it, we want to commence construction from the Kano Axis to, to Kaduna. Uh, you are aware we finished, even though I'm still going to go on inspection next week Friday, we finished the Lagos Ibadan as running, but there are many, many, many minor things that I want to go and look at to make sure that those things have been put in place. But they were putting those things in place when they ran into a little crisis. So I will go on Friday to, so, to make sure it's been put in place so that all those small, small stations can be put to use 
We are currently using the Bokuta station, we are using the Ibadan station, and we are also using the, uh, the uh, Ibuta metal station. Uh, I should be able to tell you this, we will we'll soon stop rail activities from Ibuta Meta to uh, Apapa. Reason why we will stop it. At the end of construction, believe me, we have finished just about the time to, co to commission. We discovered that <laughs> there was a place that they used to dump uh, refuse on that track. And if you leave it, it was in the next one year to begin to sink. So we saw it and we said, look, swallow your shame, bite your bullet now, than to wait for after one year. We could do it, wait until we have gone, and then somebody will say it was a bad job. So we said, no, stop, stop, don't carry any cargo. Take off the track, excavate 10 meters, remove all the refuse 10 meters down, remove it, and replace the soil, and then provide the track. That would be done in, we are given two, three, four months to do, to do all that. That would be a decision I will convey to them, because they, they came back to me and said, make that decision, because it's political. Political in the sense that people will start shouting, oh, you're not carrying cargoes from, uh, after commission, you're not carrying cargoes from, uh, from the seaport, when actually you have gotten to the, you have gotten to the seaport. Uh, I think I had to make, it was a very difficult decision to make, but I had to make that decision that we must stop now and remove the soil, the refuse dump, replace it with the soil, and replace the track and before commence the, uh, before commence the conveyance of, uh, conveying the cargo from, from Papa to, to Ibute Meta and then to Ibadan. There were two ways to go about it. The first way is to keep quiet. You wouldn't know whether we're having cargo or not, it's nobody's business. And when we complete the job, but I believe in being transparent. I believe in coming out with the truth. So the truth is that by Friday, I will convey to the contractor our decision that they should stop real activities from Apapa to Ebute Meta until they have excavated the refuse dump that we discovered, and then replace it with soil. Uh, uh, so for for Lagos Ibadan, everything is okay. I've also told the press that why we're not running 16 trains per day. Is because first of you will know about communication and signaling. You have completed it, but you, go, you continue to test it for six months. Because if you put all the system things and anything malfunctions, malfunctions on the signaling and communication, there could be an accident. And you know our Lagos people, now they are celebrating you. If an accident happens, the way they will abuse you, you think you never even constructed the rail at all. So what we agreed again, is to gradually increase the number of uh, trains that can run. As, as we test the signaling equipment, so sh are we going to do the increase? Uh, no, most people didn't know that we did the same thing in uh, Kaduna, Kaduna, Abuja. It was a gradual process. As the signal was improving, we were increasing the number of trains that were put on the track. But why we had to come out to, public, to make it public is Lagos. If they wait, if Lagos will wait after one month, you are still running for train, two months, you are still running for three months, they will start criticizing you. So it's important they know that the first two, three months will be four trains. Maybe four to six months will have gone to 10 to so 16, so 16 trains for the public to use. That's Lagos. You know. um, Kaduna Abuja, no problem. Again, we are coming out transparently. Kaduna Abuja is running. With, uh, we are doing. Uh, and then about 460,000 passengers uh, in a year. We could do better, we could do more. But we're doing about 460,000 passengers in a year. What was the problem last week? We ran from 2016 till now. We've not, we've, we've not bought uh, uh, spare parts. In fact, they don't call it, okay, they call it spare parts, but rolling stock. We need to replace the rolling stock. So the one heading to Kaduna, uh, or was it coming from Kaduna, broke down. And then it dawned on us that we've not bought rolling stocks. What, what have we done? Even before it broke down, we had applied to the president to allow us to buy rolling stock for the whole country. And he had approved. But you know the process. To complete the process is going to take us six months. That's where we are. It has not even left our office. The due process documents have not left our office. Much more go to, much more go to uh, BPP. So it's important to know that from time to time we may be having problems, even though we've decided that we'll go to Lagos and take some of the spare parts in Lagos to fix 
to fix the the trains and uh, the locomotives and coaches that we had that have spare part problems in Kaduna, Abuja. Those ones will, will be fixed with these spare parts. In fact, they are freighting this. There's a spare part of freighting to fix the one that broke down recently. So we'll be managing the two, the spare parts we have now, the one meant for Lagos, we'll manage it until we, we're able to stock again. And like I said, uh, the president has approved. We're doing the due process. After the process, we'll go to cabinet and then we we'll look for the money to buy the spare parts. So in case there's, we are, we'll assure you that we won't let any further breakdown. But in, we're human beings. But in case it happens, just know that it's the issue of spare parts. We've tried 2016 till now. Spare parts should finish. It won't, it's not a thing. It's like they are called consumables, not things that you just once you put it in the trade, it will stay there forever. If we exhaust, we we'll have to replace them. We are due for replacement. We apply to the president. He has approved, but unfortunately, <laughs> won't broke down before we could get in the spare parts. What else in the railway? We, are, we have finished everything we need to do about Portacourt Meduguri. The only problem we have with Portacourt Meduguri, and they have cancelled it yesterday, is the due process for the procurement of uh, uh, engineers, consulting engineers. I think in a bid to satisfy Nigerians who are harassing us, must it be team, must it be foreigners, must it be foreigners, we now said, okay, Nigerians would apply. Nigerians who are applying don't have the required expertise, so they have to get a JV. That's what we're looking for. So when we say you must have five years' experience, I must show us that you have had the contract for which you have come. When we say five years' experience, it's not working. It's I have done contract for five years in this, way, in this area of railway construction. No Nigerian company now. So they went and brought JV, joint partners. Now, what I refer that to is commission agents. So I can come to you, come, China, we are a Chinese company, you, can, you know how to construct railway, say yes. You can supervise, you say yes, come and supervise. Then I will, I will apply as my name. You have not met our requirement, have you? You have not. We said five years. So because that happened, due process, public procurement canceled it yesterday, and we should start afresh. That means under six months of delay for us to start the construction of uh, Portacourt Medigree. You must know I'm from Portacourt, so I'm also as worried as everybody is. I had believed that we should start and finish before we leave in the course of the Portacourt Medigree. But again, the law is the law. So due process, it, it was a very sad news when, when the permanent secretary told me that after her meeting with public procurement, they told her they have cancelled the contract. So we're going to be brutal this time. The Nigerian engineers can criticize us as much as they want to criticize us. It's not about Nigerians, it's about delivery. So we'll say back to advertisement, if you have five years experience, not as an engineer working, but as somebody who has done that job, right, you are qualified. So if Nigerians don't qualify, it's unfortunate. Because if you say, you see, we are trying to do it to get Nigerians in, but unfortunately the law is the law. So if you say, I have five years experience, it must be team, because team supervise Itabewari, even before we came. Right? Team supervise Lagos Ibadan. Team supervise uh, Kaduna Abuja. So which Nigerian company has supervised any railway construction? So we're likely going to go back to where uh, we may not qualify. When I say we, I mean we Nigerians. Because you see, the problem with railway is that when the accident happens, that's why I say to Nigerians that if I were to be a lawmaker, I would be recommending uh, manslaughter charge against those who deal with uh, vandalization of the rail tracks. The reason is that it takes about 800 meters for a, rail, a, a, a locomotive to stop. As it's running now, it's running with speed. The moment he wants to stop, the, the driver will apply brake here, and you take 800 meters to stop. So how will a driver know that you have removed, vandalized a track 800 meters away? He will not know until he gets to the track. So when he gets to the track, what happens? He applies brake, right? He needs 800 meters to stop. So once he gets to that track that has been vandalized, he will derail. Once he derails, what happens? Some people may die. And each coach takes 85 uh, Is it 85? Yeah. Yeah, 85 persons. Each coach. Yeah, 85 persons. So what happens? You would have killed, and there, there, sometimes there are about 14, 20 coaches. 
So imagine how many persons that would die as a result of that derailment just because one selfish Nigerian is trying to steal tracks to make money. I think, like other countries, I don't mind, I must say should be killed because it's poverty. But I'm saying they, sh they should be charged for mass manslaughter because people could die. Okay, but again, they will ask you, manslaughter means that somebody died. But if anybody dies, then they should be charged for manslaughter. If nobody dies, then they should be charged for stealing or something. That's my view. And uh, uh, I said that because when they were stealing the narrow gauge, the one from Potakos Meduga, I wasn't too worried because I know that whether we like it or not, we'll replace it. That's the contract. But they moved from stealing narrow gauge Potakos Meduga to stealing narrow gauge Lagos Kano. Again, we are looking for possible uh, companies that could, under PPP, take over that. And if they take it over, they will, they will remove the, the old track and replace it with new ones. So I wasn't, but when they now move to East Abewari, which is now standard gauge, brand new tracks, then it becomes dangerous. Because a poor man from Wari, who is going to East Abe by a 6 o'clock train, would not know that his train will derail because somebody has already gone at night to cut off uh, the track. That is dangerous. And I think that the solution is exactly what the government is doing now about, this, about this security. You see, I have said that if you enforce the law, Nigerians will obey. I hope, now you're feeling a bit of security. Are you not? You, you, can, you can drive around. You feel a bit secure more than before. It's because the government has shown, look, look, this joke has to stop. And uh, the joke has to stop, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> That's what Nigerians like to hear. That's the way I govern River State. Brook no nonsense. Let the person know there is a law, and that as, as the governor, who has been elected as governor of River State, I will enforce the law. So if the law means to shoot my brother, I will shoot him. That's what the law says. Since the, you saw security agencies enforcing the law, everybody is now behaving that. So the same way, if we enforce the law on validation of tra tracks, it will stop. And I've asked the, the MD of railway, where is the railway police? Say they're not enough. So I'm going to see the IG. Give us enough men and, and uh, materials so that we can use them to police the, the tracks. Because having moved from narrow gauge to standard gauge, it becomes a national. Most of the ones are not a national security issue. But narrow gauge, we had it maybe once a week or twice a week. Or but this one is a daily thing. Sometimes three to four trips, five, six trips a day. And the poor guys who are enjoying air condition, this, uh, enjoying themselves, some of them will have slept off. Suddenly there's a, a derailment which may lead to death. That I don't, I don't encourage. I have discussed it, I'm worried, which is, uh, which is, people are, is running, people are picking passengers. I, uh, somebody made analysis on the, in the press that uh, to fly from, is it where you have been to, to Abuja is about 60,000 Naira, right? To come by road is about 20. But to get to Abuja by train is 6,000 Naira. Which is cheaper? 2,500 from Wari to Itabe. There's a bus or a taxi waiting for you. You join the taxi at uh, 3,500. It brings you to Abuja. 2,005 plus 3,005. How much is that? 6,000. So, anybody who says Wari is not putting money in your pocket, ask him that question. That if you had paid 60,000 naira by flight, remove 6,000 from 60,000. How much is that? 54. You're a rich man. Buhari has given you 54,000 naira. He won't, he won't agree. <laughs> okay. If you're not those who are flying, you're those who use night bus or whatever. First, you, you're not encountering security problem because in our deal. But if you go by that night bus, nobody knows who can wait for you around local jail and collect your bag from you. Now, you're paying 20,000, right? So if you remove 6,000 from 20,000, Buhari has given you how much? 14,000 naira. Uh, you know, what, what they call... Oh, it's not fighting poverty. It's if you put sand in his pocket and put money in your pocket, that's not the way to do it. The way to do it is to save you from those expenditures you make that government can bear on your behalf. I discussed Potakot Medjugorje. I said we're ready to go, but unfortunately, uh, we have a due process problem with the issue of supervising engineers, and nobody can work until the supervising engineer signs off on your drawing. So it affects Kano Maradi. We're ready to go with Kano Maradi. <laughs> in fact, they, they sent me photographs of... Uh, people who are doing some survey work and doing some uh, uh, soil analysis and all that. 
Well, that's the much they can do. They can't do more than that until a supervising engineer comes and says, you can go, I, I approve these drawings, I approve this. So we're also stuck in the type of worry. Well, we won't be stuck in Kano Kaduna because the, the due process has been approved a long time for a uh, team to supervise Kano Kaduna. But we are stuck, Potakot Medugui, we'll be stuck, Kano Maradi. So we need to really hurry. I don't know how, I don't know how we can hurry, but we need, we need to really hurry to, to get uh, the supervising engineers. That's real. What else? What, where are we? Well, we've talked about Kano Maradi, we've talked about Kano Kaduna, we've talked about Lagos Ibadan. We've talked about Ibadan to Abuja, which is one I say we're waiting for funds from um, China. But I'm not willing to wait for Kano Kaduna because I can raise the money in my budget and I've already uh, commenced funding the money for my budget. I hope that next year budget they will be able to give under 200 billion naira to, to pay them, which will get me close to between three to 400 uh, or 500 million dollars. Uh, in that case, I've got nearly half of the cost of the contract. You can borrow the rest to complete them. Uh, currently, we are funding Takot Medigree from the budget too. We've paid them, may not be up to $100 million, but if we release some more money to them in the, before December, it should be able to get to, uh, up to $100 million. And then the contract is $3.020 billion for now. Of course, we've not included, we've not included um, uh, OCA, and uh, back like it, but they'll be included. Um, I, I will, they are doing the studies. I'll write to the president and I'll go to cabinet for approval. They will, add, I will include it. But I don't know the cost for now. The cost that I know is Potakot to Mediguri. Potakot to Mediguri includes from Potakot to Wiri. And you know, it's good to be a minister for transport. You know, there's no way you go to Wiri without passing through my village. So you really pass through my village to Wiri. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing. If you think I did, I did it. You, you won't believe it. <laughs> when we said we we'll go to Wiri, they took off from uh, Elede One. If you take off from Elede One, you get to Wiri. If you take off from Oyibo, you get to Wiri. Because to get to Wiri, the last village between Imo State and River State is Omrelu, and Omrelu borders where Ubima. So there's nothing you will do unless you want to go from Abia, in which case. It's not possible. You will be coming from Aba back again to Wede. The closest route to Wede from Potakot is you must pass through. I'm saying that because more you say minister is just is what is, no, it's not nepotism. Nepotism about your brother. What do you call it when when you favor your village? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so that with railway. So let's deal with seaport. I don't I don't know, you pull up, I don't know if there's any railway we've left behind. Okay, so it means I'm not I'm not too old. I still can remember things. Then let's deal with seaports. If you see the, the, the seaport, that's that, okay, coastal rail. So you, you put as old as I am, you are getting coastal rail. Coastal rail too, we're ready to go. The problem is the same thing as, um, but we've not funded it, even though we're, we're negotiating loans. All these projects were negotiating the loans. The only ones that are, I'm pushing are the ones that I'm saying, look, I can fund from my budget. So once they pay me, I pay the contractor. Once they pay me, pay the contractors. But I've not funded coastal rail. From the budget, it may be funded, uh, may likely be funded 100% from the uh, what's it called, from the from the loans. So when we finish the loan, but even if we, they approve the loan today, we can't proceed until we finish with the supervising engineers. So we we'll finish with rail. Now the problem with that was my argument about coastal rail. I said we don't necessarily have to go to Lagos. The reason why all other uh, uh, alignments are going to Lagos is because of the seaport. Now. Out of the six seaports in Nigeria, f four are found in the, in the coastal area. So you, you need Lagos. Because there's a Potaka seaport, there's a Ness seaport, there's a Wari seaport, and there's a Calabar seaport. So you don't need to go to Lagos. So if we need to save money, for now, we don't need to do from, from uh, Akure to Lagos. We can take Akure to Benin, Benin to Wari, uh, Benin to Asaba. And then Mm, uh, worry to uh, Bayesa, that's uh, Yenegua. Yenegua to Portacourt. It, it was a very difficult decision for us, for me in particular, to go to Aba when the Portacourt Medigui is also going to Aba. But what I met is Portacourt to Aba, Aba to Uyu, Uyu to Calabar. Uh, that's the coastal area. The Portacourt Medigui is the one that has about nearly 12 to 13 states. It starts with Portacourt, which is rivers, Abia, Aba, Were, Imo, 
uh, Omaha is still Aba. Aba. Uh, Enugu, which is Enugu State. He goes to Oka, which is uh, Arambra. He goes to Eboy, which is uh, Bakleke. Then he goes to uh, Makodi, which is uh, Benue. He goes to Lafia, which is Nasarawa. He goes to Joss, which is Plateau. Then from Joss, he goes to Kafanchan, Kafanchan to Kaduna, to, which is Kaduna State, right? Then he goes to Bauchi, which is Bauchi State. He goes to Gombe, which is Gombe. And then he goes to Damaturu, which is Yobe. And then goes to Meduguri, which is about 12, 13 states. The rest, there's no, no, no other track. The Western line has about seven. This was about 12, 12 and 13 states. So even the coastal states, the coastal rail, is only the six coastal states and Akure, which is owned, so seven. So the longest in terms of taking in communities and states is the Potakot Meduguri. But it doesn't carry the highest volume of tonnage of cargoes. That comes from Potakot, uh, Lagos to Kano. So the most viable rail is Lagos to Kano, followed by Potakot to Meduguri. That's, we've not done a full study of uh, Lagos to Calabar. We need to do that to be able to know maybe, maybe the volume of uh, wet cargoes in terms of crude oil and uh, petrol. May inform, the, may inform the viability, economic viability of that. Now, in terms of the seaport, <laughs> the president approved the construction of the Bonnie seaport, but we funded as PPP. We have no, we're not putting one cobble. The Chinese company that is doing Potakos Meduguri will have to empty. That's, that's one good thing about Potakos Meduguri. It doesn't actually start from Potakos, it starts from Bonnie. So, with the seaport in Bonnie, from Bonnie it comes to Potakot. Now, then from Potakot around, we not made a decision whether it's Oyibo that we take off from or we take off from earlier the one. Either way, it goes to Wiri. Then Potakot then goes all that way. So the seaport around that area will be covered. The 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 Lagos Calabar will terminate at Calabar Seaport, will tee off to Wari Seaport. Even the Itabe Wari will tee off to the new seaport we are building in uh, in uh, Wari. So there's a new deep seaport that will have to be built in Wari when we do the central line. The central line is Wari up to Abuja, linking the western line. The western line is linked at two places. No, the western line is linked at Kafachan with the eastern line. Now the coastal line is linked to the central line at, two pla at, at, at Wari. Then the coastal line is also linked to the eastern line at Aba. So you see, what we've done is to connect Nigeria. You can wake up from here, from Portacourt, and say, look, I'm going to Soto. Now, if you enter the train in Portacourt, it will take you up to, okay, Sokoto is yet off, we're here to connect Sokoto. Let's say Kaduna. So it takes you off from Portacourt, lands you at Kafachan. Kafachan, two things will happen. If it's a train that is meant to go to Kaduna, when it gets to Kafachan, it will change its boogie from a narrow gauge bogey to a standard gauge bogey. You in your train, we will know that they have moved from the normal descent to, from your normal narrow gauge bogey to a standard gauge bogey because if you're running on a standard gauge track, then it takes you to, it takes you to Kaduna. What's the most important is that now Nigeria will be connected. You can go from anywhere. You can leave, leave um, you can leave Calabar and arrive in Abuja by just coming from Calabar to, to worry, you join the Itabe. Itabe is also terminated at Abuja. The contracts are awarded, but fund is an issue. So it takes you to, Ita to worry. It, what it takes you, f I hope, we'll f if we don't finish the next comment, we'll finish it. It takes you from Itabe to Abuja. You can wake up from Abuja and say, I want to go to Lagos. Well, you can follow the Lagos line. It's just, well, I've told you how it is connected. Now, in terms of seaports, there are three basic seaports that this government intends to start. I don't know if we'll finish it. The one we are going to finish, whether they like it or not, is the Lekki Deep Seaport, right? And that will be the first seaport in Nigeria. I've had this argument with, um, with uh, Fashola. He says, Lagos, Papa is the seaport. Papa is not the seaport. Papa is the river port. Tinka is the river port. It tees off the ocean. A seaport is a port found on the sea. But look at all our ports. They, are, they, are, they all tee off the ocean. The Onet Seaport, which is about the deepest, off 
from the Bonin. They call it Bonin River. <laughs> Not even this ocean. It's at, the, at Bonin, you get the ocean. That's why we say Bonin Deep Sea Port. That's why we're saying we're having a problem with worry because to get a Bonin Deep Sea Port, which was what we approved, you have to reclaim close to 32 kilometers into the water. And that's huge, huge amount of money. So that's when we're having. And uh, that deep sea port that's coming on is the, uh, is the, the Aquaibon one, because it's just sitting right there in the water, not a, not a river. So, so what the government has done is the president has approved the construction of Lekki deep sea port, and like I told you, to, we'll finish it 2022. Then he also approved the Bonny deep sea port, which will commence as soon as we commence the construction of the Potakot Medigui rail line, because that's the agreement. The agreement is contractor. We pay you for, we pay you for Potakot to medical construction. You fund the, 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 the construction of the deep sea port, and you manage it for I don't know how many years, but cabinet has approved the number of years that he will manage it. <laughs> then, what deep sea port is the same thing that the agreement between us and the contractor who will do from Itabe to Abuja, passing through Lokoja, Baro to Abuja. And then, uh, at where we terminated currently at Wari, he takes it from there to the Wari Deep Seaport, if we can get up to the sea. Uh, which other seaport? Well, the one for acquire bomb is with the state government. We just gave them a franchise or an approval to go ahead and construct. I think they have, a, from what we gave them, they have a company. I don't know whether it's a the French company that is in partnership with them. So these are the, I've named how many seaports? Four. I've named four. Seaports. My ministry, okay, there is a, a very little element of my ministry that most people don't know about. The land transportation, which is predominantly done by uh, Minister of Works because of the Highway Act. But we have the element that has to do with the, the proto ECOWAS protocols and all that. And then we supervise, we make some of the policies on, on land transportation. Like we said last time, that we will encourage that those who construct through other state or federal government should put this in for bicycle, those who use bicycles, so that Nigerians can live a healthy life. I think I'm done. Thank you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. No. Okay, we still use it. We still use it. <laughs> The Honorable Minister dwelt a lot on, of course, the rail project and the seaport. You must have noted that he did not dwell on the politics of it. He went straight to the project, what's involved, what he's doing, when it will be finished. So please, in firing your questions, also restrict yourself to the project. Let's leave the politics out of it. I don't believe in uh, ethnic politics, I swear. Please keep it to yourself. Thank you, Honorable Minister. My name is Tony Ailemen. I write for Business Day. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll still remember. Okay. <laughs> so, my question has to do with the issue of um, having qualified Nigerians to play certain roles in the sector. Uh, Nigeria has a policy that wants to promote local content and as part of federal government policy of job creation and strengthening the economy. So if um, Nigerians, or how do you intend to factor in this local content policy into your program and also ensure that Nigerians play a major role? Because at the end of the day, when the Chinese are out, it falls back to Nigerians to manage it. Thank you.
General Minister, my name is Dr. Anule Emmanuel. I write for AFP. You write for who? AFP. 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 You said there are operations on the Apapa Ebutemeta realignment has been stopped uh, because of discoveries of soil in, uh, at particular, in a particular area. Honestly, I'm, I'm asking you, for projects of this nature, I'm sure feasibility stories, studies are always done. Was this discovered? Is it a fault from the, uh, the contractor? Or is it a fault from government? And who bears the cost? And how much is government going to spend on this particular area? Thank you. Um, good morning. Gloria Omezeke from Panels TV. Um, so, uh, much as Ni Nigerians appreciate infrastructure, you know, on ground. I can't hear you. Take off your mask, please. My name is Gloria Almezweke from Channel Television. Much of Nigerians appreciate the infrastructure on the ground and how the federal government is you know, intensifying efforts to put this in place. Um, concerns are mounting over how much vandals are you know, um, disintegrating efforts, the federal government's efforts so far. What is the strategy in place to curb this? I mean, because I mean, if we have infrastructure in place and then vandals are uh, um, disempowering the government's effort. How are we certain, you know, we're going to enjoy the benefits of this in the long run? Thank you. My name is Felix Onwa. Um, Currently, uh, government is in talks with Standard Chartered, mm -hmm. Standard Chartered Bank. How do you know? You know, uh, <laughs> you know. I've said it. R Felix of Reuters. Reuters. Felix on Reuters. Mm, I know. Yeah, government is currently having talks with uh, Standard Chartered uh, over a loan, um, up to fourteen point four billion dollars. And um, this money, we were money you were expecting from Chinese banks that didn't come. Why now trying to replace some of these funds you were expecting from China? You know, you are now sourcing for a different fund, you know, from the China source. And then I would like to know some of these projects you intend to execute with this different from your funds, your sources from others, like Europe, other from the Chinese bank. I know why you are replacing some of these Chinese loans. Are you from China? <laughs> well, I can tell you before. Eh? Okay, let's do the last question. I, I, I don't think we should, you know, okay, no, I, I, this is a formal thing. I want, well, I want to use a, a, this thing. I don't think it should bother you who will get the money from. As a Christian, the only person I won't take money from is Satan. <laughs> Another person. But it's not also true that these are funds that Chinese have not given to us. And we, no, no. The only loan we have negotiated with China, the Chinese government or China Exim Bank that is yet to come is Ibadan to Kano. Potakov Beduguri, right? When to a Chinese company, but they were yet to even uh, we were yet to apply for a loan when we discovered that Europe has opened up and Europe is willing to allow us borrow from them. So we quickly went to Standard Chartered Bank, right? And that's 3.020 billion dollars. And my position now is whatever is in my budget, can I start funding? Oh, whatever I have, can I start funding for my budget? At any point in time, they get the loan. Then it is, you, you, will, you will deduct what I have put in so that Nigeria does not have to bear all the costs. I mean, um, from loan. So the interest, take for instance, the way I'm pursuing, uh, and I'm doing like a native man, the way I'm pursuing Takot uh, Meduguri and Kano uh, Kaduna is Duko, 
I have paid, I think I paid about 10, 13 billion naira for Portacos Medigori. And I'm about to pay another 10. If I get it to 50, haven't I paid, I'm using the black market rate. I don't know what they pay in CBN. If I pay up to 50, it's not $100 million. So it will now be 2.9. It will no longer be 3.020 billion dollars. You get it, man? And I continue to do that until I leave, until we finish the construction. Take uh, Kano Kaduna. Kano Kaduna is $1.2 uh, billion. I have paid $280 million already, right? If I pay $280 million, how much is remaining? So it's, if it's 1.2 now, so what's the remaining will be, will be 900 and something million. If I pay another 100 million dollars in the next few weeks, 800 and something million. So if I consider that way, by, by the end of this next year, to early next, to early next year, we would have probably paid between 500 and 600 million dollars. So what you may likely be borrowing will be about 500 or 600, 700 million dollars. That I'm doing to make sure that we don't leave too much debt behind if we can have the money, discipline ourselves to, to spend what we have. So we're not, uh, we're not, we're waiting for the Chinese for only a baron to Kano. We're borrowing, and that's, that's a big question we need to ask ourselves. If the Chinese don't turn up in the next few months, why shouldn't we approach the European banks to fund a baron to Kano? And, and I will put that before, before the Minister of Finance. The Salah Chad has accepted to fund uh, Lagos, uh, we're negotiating with them, Lagos uh, Calabar, we're negotiating Port Harcourt, uh, Medjugorje, I think these are, and, and then, oh, they're not the funding uh, Kano Maradi. Kano Maradi is funded by Credit Suisse. Okay, so I've answered, that's the question you raised, and I've answered that we're just looking for money, we look for money from everybody, excluding Satan, because I'm a Christian. Vandas. And, and I'll give you this example, uh, Gloria. Uh, when I was governor, I was so angry with Nigerians. You know how much it costs? Road construction of 10 billion naira. Hmm? 4 billion is for the road. Do you know where 6 billion is going? What do you call that on the, on the middle? Uh, median. Do you know why Nigerians put median? So that Nigerians won't drive across. There is no reason that for you to put a median. And if you put a median, you must put drainage. Which costs, so you're paying for lawlessness. Cash the idiot and put him in jail and save Nigeria six billion naira. <laughs> you, you get the point? So the reason now, and I, I find it, I, I get very angry because now we have to look for money to now begin to look for drones, to now to look for technology, so that we can stop the criminal. Or first see him. If when you see him, then you have to pay or get police to respond quickly. Well, if they don't respond quickly, the guy could have finished and, and gone. So we are not going to pay extra costs for enforcement of law and order. That's why up to now I've not made a decision on what do we do. The only one I've made a decision is those who are stealing the clips. Like um Kaduna Abuja. Over 10, 15,000 clips have been stolen, and it was replaced daily. So what people don't know is that before the train runs in the morning, people will take a walk from the beginning of Kaduna, Abuja. We pay people from different villages. They have to take a walk to know which, where they have stolen clips. And we must replace so that you don't get a situation where the train can derail. Are you doing that because some people are stealing the listen? That, that's why some of these harsh laws you see, is to curb some of these excesses. So what we are doing is, okay, we are fixing the clips, we are paying, every day we are paying for clips, we are buying clips, we are fixing it, and they're not made in Nigeria. If they were made in Nigeria, it's okay, it's growing the economy because we are going to the market to buy it. They are bought overseas, so you buy them in dollars. Now, that one, I'm thinking, the solution, we found the solution to that. What's the solution? That's what they call anti-theft clips. But they are more expensive, three times more expensive than this one. And it's, it's better than buying this. Well, this one will be like, uh, is it, how old is it? Is it one pound foolish or what? Penny wise pound foolish. Because that's what's happening in Kaduna. You are looking for something cheap. And then at the end of the day, it's more expensive than what, we, what we're trying to do, what we've approved they should do in uh, Lagos Ibadan. 
They also bought this uh, cheap clips, and I said, no, 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 stop. Go and replace it. So they are replacing Lagos Ibadan. Lagos Ibadan will be anti theft and all other construction will be anti theft anti theft you can't open it, you can't remove it, it will be permanently there. But we need to now go back to uh, Abuja, Abuja, Kaduna, and turn it, change it to anti theft clips. But How do you spend every day? I don't know. I have to ask. I'm not a, see, the minister, is not, I like what people will do. When train breaks down, instead of an RCMD, they send it in to me. Because you don't just send it out, it gets to the minister. The minister does not run, run an ROC. <laughs> there's, a, there's a, an MD of an ROC. I have to find out how much they spend, but it's quite expensive. And we, we really have to make a decision and pay for it now, for them to change to anti theft clip in uh, Kaduna, Abuja. I don't know why we have not made that decision, because we should have made this, when we discovered that we spent over, we've replaced over 10 to 15,000 clips for the six years we've, we've stayed here. So for the vandals, I think it's not just enough to put, we are, we are, we are negotiating with experts in technology for, for, for as our response, but it's not enough. I think the law should deal with those who break it. The law should not be quiet. And I don't think, I don't know what the law says, but the, the Chinese company that was arrested for buying those uh, uh, tracks, uh, they got away with 200 and something thousand naira fine. I think the law should do much more than that. In fact, we we'll caught a Chinese company in Joss buying from them. Then the next few months, we arrested the Chinese man with other people at Nasarawa, got him to direct me. So that's what we have. That's the issue of vandals. The other issue is the who, who discovered the soil, the who will pay for it. The, that's a question from the AFP man. Uh, you know, if they ask me again, what do you want to be? After Minister for Transport, I would say Minister for Transport. It's, the job is enjoyable in the sense that when you go, I, I, and I'll give an example, I say it's enjoyable. We go to, we go to Apapa, and that's why you respect engineers. And when we go to Apapa, if you see pipes, some were, nobody knew who owns the pipe. Some were not, no identity, nothing. We don't even know the depth of the pipes. We don't know what. We went to an MPC. We didn't find a solution. We didn't find a solution. We had to get a company. It wasn't part of the contract. From Italy. You see why you must get professional engineers. Team, not us. Team, they were, and I, as I say, I enjoyed it. So I will sit like this at the of the meeting. You will see debate, China, CCCC. They, they were debating, debating, debating until they came to a conclusion. What was the conclusion? That is a particular type of equipment they have to bring from Italy. Team said, I'll get the equipment. The equipment will come here and identify all the pipes, no matter how deep it is. So that's the first thing we did. We identified all the pipes, all. So we went to an NPC. They said, if you touch these pipes, you shut down Nigeria. And we were to, we were to survey them to build our track. And they said, no, you will shut down the country. And then the what problem, if you build on the track, on the pipes, you bust the pipe. So. We got another team from uh, Italy that came with another technology that helped us to lay the track after civil works on top of the civil works was on top of the pipes before we laid the tracks on it without any impact on the on the pipes, right? So when you do feasibility study, it does not give you the minute details. It does not tell you here there was a refuse. You won't know until you get to that point. Right? Now, when we go to that point, both the Chinese company and the um, uh, cost, uh, the school engineers saw it, but felt it was three meters, so they covered. They removed three meters and, and covered. When they finished construction, they began to see depression at that spot. Then they did further investigation. This is the further investigation I told them. It is not just three meters, it's 10 meters. And then we had finished, we were rushing to, com to commission, and then they comforted me with uh, politician. We are finished as engineers. Now, this is political decision. If you hide this thing, 
in the name of uh, commissioning, you pay for it in two, three years. You can slow down, don't commission till January next year. I'm a politician, why not? As a politician, the contract they have is actually a booted matter to the to river. No, nobody, most of them don't remember that. That the contract awarded to CCCC was a booted matter to. That's a contract. It's Buhari that came and said, no, 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 no. What kind of co contract is this? All our rail uh, tracks must end at the seaport. So please, please commission a booted matter to, <laughs> to Lagos. When we finish uh, uh, a booted matter to Papa, we commission to now. If that's what you want. But the truth is, so let's commission a booted matter, which is the actual the contract, and slow down, uh, commi uh, slow down, it's not commission, won't commission apart to a booty meter again. But business activities may not commence on a booty meter until we excavate the meters of, those, of that soil and replace it. And it will take more than two, three months. Then we begin to carry cargoes from, uh, from the seaport. It, that's why, in fact, that's why we said we will commission the NIMASA program inside the seaport so that you will see that we got to the seaport. Not tomorrow now, you say no. They didn't, there was nothing like that. They didn't get to the seaport. So we, we begged the president that they should come to a Hapa seaport and commission the Nimasa project so that whole Nigerians will see that we didn't get to put a better and we trekked <laughs> to the seaport or we used a car to the seaport. We used train. In fact, this Friday, I will use train to the seaport. So I know we are running. But then I will make a decision that Friday to say shut down this train and excavate that point close to the Papa station and remove the, the refuse. Because the refuse soil is not a good soil. I hope you know. It continues to depress if you put weight on it. And the weight you're going to carry, not just passenger weight. If it's passenger, we will leave it. But you're going to carry cargo from there to Ibano. That's, that's uh, the, the guy who, asked, who, who discovered it. Who will pay for it? It's part of the contract. We're not asking government for more money. It's going to be part of the contract. Uh, local content policy. It's a very difficult one. In fact, I've had my, my fight with Nigerian engineers on this. The first time well, I was a bit radical in saying, look, if you're not qualified, you're not qualified. Then I later, in the course of my study, in the course of my study of how most countries developed in railways, I discovered that they must bring in their own people. You don't bring in your own people, then you don't progress. Because at the time, you must ask the Chinese to go. You must ask the Italians to go. For me, what did I do? The first thing I did was to take about 300 Nigerians to China to go and study. And, and the argument the Nigerian engineers make to me is that there is no particular engineering called railway engineering. That is either mechanical, civil, and the Chinese I shouldn't mind them. That is what they call <laughs> railway engineering. That the bridge you build for railway is not the same bridge you build for road. I, they agree that it's, it's bridge, but that it's not the same. The technology is not the same. And then, so we agreed to send 300 Nigerians to go and study in China. They are there, they are studying. When they come back, we introduce them. We we'll just absorb them into NROC. We employ them. So they can make work for us. I felt that's not enough. The Chinese would agree, and they are, the Chinese paid for it. The Chinese would agree to be every day training our people. So we said okay to them. Look, go to Nigeria, build for us a university. And they say, where will they get the money from? I say, just assume that I want to take bribe from you. Will you be honest that you won't give me up to $100 million bribe? <laughs> they put the answer. And I said, okay. So just assume that I want bribe. Take that bribe and build university for us. And they, so they have been investing at Daura for $50 million. Right? At the time they are building this, it's $18 billion. Now $50 million must be about 25, right? I'm, you know, I'm a village man. I'm calculating based on black market. <laughs> I don't know what they do CBN. So they are building the university. Now, let me tell you the agreement. I did that. I'm sure the Chinese, the Chinese were celebrating when we finished our first term. They believe I won't come back as minister. You can ask them. <laughs> when I came back, eh, because they moved out of sight in Lagos, Ibadan. They moved out of sight. Once they announced me as minister, without even asking for portfolio, they rushed back to sight. <laughs> <laughs> now, Lagos, I mean, the university at Meduguri, they agreed to reach with them in writing. You will teach us. 
you hire teachers, English speaking Chinese. You manage this university for five years and teach us for five years, after which you exit, we'll take over. Ministry of Transport will take over Ministry of Education because we will spend the money to run university. We don't want to be part of this in Nigerian university things when we hear that they don't have money, they don't have uh, chemicals. No, 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 this university is a specialized university. The idea is let us train because what I, uh, what I saw in, in South Africa is that they are producing their own locomotives. Um, okay, they are producing their own coaches, certainly. They are producing their own locomotive, but they buy a lot of other spare parts from other parts of the world, including France. Now, I asked China how they got their technology, railway technology, and they told me clearly. They brought in, uh, what do you call this company? A railway company in, in America and gave them contract with Ford, even car, and said, produce 15% in Nigeria, in, 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 in America. 85% must be produced in China. And they began to understudy them. That's why if you see the contrast we did in uh, the, the wagons we are buying, we said produce 15% in China, produce, assemble 85% in Nigeria. So they are building a factory at Kajola. I'm discussing the local contract, I will get to the one you're asking. So now, if they are building a factory in, in Kajula, and we sign an agreement that we'll be buying from them, I said, well, you don't have the problem. Why do I have to spend dollars when I can buy in Naira, in Nigeria? Then you can change, it's up to you to change your money and send to your country. But here, I will buy in Naira. So they are building the factory, and I hope that by December we should be able to commission that factory. And I've told them they have to hurry, because they've supplied us 15% of the wagons, they need to supply us 85. And that 85 will be assembled in, in Nigeria, in uh, Kajola. I hope that whoever takes over from me as Minister for Transport will know that under company to that agreement, the company that after five years, you will now begin to manufacture here, no longer assembly. You, you, you get the point? All that is to localize the railway technology. So there's a university in Daura to teach our children. There is Kajola, again, don't forget, it's not part of the contract, too. It's also, I've also forced them to invest their own money. Because to do Lagos Ibadan, $2 billion, nearly $1 trillion in your pocket, and you will not want to spend something here, you're wasting your time, man. So they agreed, they're building the, the factory for selling of wagons. They've also agreed in writing that after five years, they will start, instead of assembling, they will start producing. Then they will graduate from there to building a factory to produce uh, locomotives and coaches and spare parts. Let me tell you, they think, they think we are finished, but I'm not finished. I'll sit them down. Because we are not negotiated for Lagos Calabar. If they think they will just take that money and go, they're wasting their time. We will see. They then tell us what they will, I'm not be thinking what they contribute from that money they will get for Lagos to Calabar. I'm thinking that shouldn't we build another factory? for locomotives and coaches somewhere in the south, because they insist that it must be close to the water, to the, to the ocean. So either come to Portacot, or go to Calabar, or go to Aquaibom, or go to Delta. Because if we say, I must go to where there's ocean, there's ocean in Delta, there's ocean in, even by Esa, there's ocean in Portacot, there's ocean in uh, Calabar, and Aquaibom. But I'm not sat down with them, I need to sit down with them to negotiate that. I'm also thinking that we need to take, because my, for me, this, inf this uh, crime you're seeing, security, security. It's not, nobody was born to be, to be a thief or an armed robber or a kidnapper. It's hunger. The more jobs we create, the more persons you bring out of the insecurity market. So I'm looking at what we can send to between Zaria and Kano from them as their own contribution. I'm, I'm just looking at that and I need, I, trust me, I'll sit down with them to, to, to achieve that before, before the end of the year. Uh, then I think that's the final question, is it? That's the final question. But the one you're talking about, it will be difficult to just bring in the Nigerian engineers to supervise, to supervise the way. The reason why it will be difficult is that when, if, they, if it is poorly supervised and there's an accident, don't call Amechi. You know, I told the President one thing, I said, I told the President about two or three weeks ago, I said, Mr. President, you know, nobody remembers who is the Minister for Transport on that Babangela. How many of you remember? Everybody is quiet. How many people remember Minister for Transport on Abacha? Hmm? 
It's difficult. But if they say, if they ask you now, I said to Mr. President, nobody will remember me. All these stories you're hearing, nobody will remember. Mm -hmm. Buhari built what? Mm -hmm. Railway. So if there's an accident, <laughs> <laughs> nobody will call me. So, this is Buhari, cheap railways. Mm -hmm. Very cheap. <laughs> nobody will call me. Well, if I like, I can jump to Kano by air, by swim to Kano, do anything I like. <laughs> this is Buhari. <laughs> See the poor railway Buhari built. It's a sport. And like now, I'm praising him. I hope you know that. Oh, Lagos, I, I told my daughter, this please, if one mistake happens, the way this people will turn around, they will be shocked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's enjoy it with a bit of uh, this thing. So for me, I, I don't mind bringing Nigerians. I swear, I need Nigerians to know how to, not, not just the knowledge, the money we're spending should also be localized. Mm -hmm. I need it. I'm not joking. So what, what have we done? We've asked them to identify some local content in the contract which they would award to Nigerians. But, men, I doubt that if Nigerians are not experienced in, in, in uh, supervising, I will not give because of lives. That I will not give. But I've asked under the directive of the president, he has given me a written approval that they should show us the local content and award it to Nigerian uh, subcontracts. I've answered the four questions. Who is that? That chairman? Ah, yes, uh, those of my chairman don't ask anything like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I want to warn you about the uh, uh, You're late, you're late, you're late. I said in two weeks' time. <laughs> Any other question? Because today is my, is the day I have to go to the office and work. Okay, sir. I appreciate the Minister for Transportation for coming to grace this press briefing. And let me also thank the members of the Presidential Communication Team who put this together for the good work you do week after week. It's also my pleasure to welcome the aides of the Minister, Dave. Our old friend, good to see you again after years, Israel. <laughs> Israel, you're welcome, and uh, our dear lady, you're also welcome. So, thank you, Minister. We are glad that you came, and any other time we require your presence, we hope you always oblige us. Thank you very much. Thank you.